The NCAA tournament is officially here. Who should you, Orlando Magic fans, be watching? It's your official NCAA tournament preview of sorts today on Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is March 21st, 2024. My name is Philip Rossman-Reich. I'm the expert and site editor over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Philip R-R underscore O-M-D. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, it is your official Orlando Magic NCAA Tournament preview. I will highlight the prospects and players I think you should have your eye on as we look a little bit ahead to the NBA draft. I know the Magic are in the playoffs. I know the Magic have got their playing spot. we got the Pelicans coming to town on Thursday, but the draft is always happening. So we'll talk a little bit, little bit draft today and who you should be watching as the NCAA tournament tips off, or it's already tipped off, but as it continues on Thursday. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Magic is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. Okay, let's let's start here. Um, because I think the best way to frame this is to talk about needs and talk about where we think the magic might go. Um, obviously shooting, that's that 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 goes without saying. Um, but the magic currently are slated to draft 21st in, in the NBA draft. That's that's the pick that they currently hold if the season ended today. So obviously we're not drafting in the lottery. Obviously we're not drafting in the top 10. And so in my estimation, I think a, your pool of players that you're picking, picking from gets significantly wider. Um, you know, you're not, you know, you're, when you're drafting one, you're looking at two or three guys. Um, when you're drafting six, you're looking at like 10 or 12. When you're drafting 21, you're, you're looking at like, 15, 20, 30 guys, perhaps, that you got to sort through and figure out. When we get to draft coverage at the end of the season, after the season ends, um, uh, we're, we're going to be digging through a lot of guys here. And so we just want to begin to highlight some of them. But I think when you are drafting this late and, and when you are a team where the Magic are at, it's not necessarily that you're done developing players. And obviously the Magic aren't done developing players. They're going to keep trying to build and grow players. Um they're still a very, very young team, but you do need to bring in guys who are going to fit the puzzle. Uh, and on that front, obviously, the Magic still have a lot of questions. Um, Anthony Black is out of the rotation at the moment, but he certainly looks like he can be a player. Jet Howard has been with the with the G League with Osceola Magic for most of the season. That appears to be part of the plan and perhaps will be part of the plan for whoever the Magic pick, assuming they keep their 2024 draft pick. As we mentioned on the pod a couple of weeks ago with Richard Stamen of Locked on NBA Big Board, definitely check that show out. Um, as we mentioned then, this is not a particularly strong class, so trading around might be difficult. Trading up might be a little bit easier, in fact, because of that. Um, and so, who knows? I, I would say this, and this is this is probably the most important point. Just because, just because the draft is perceived to be bad does not mean that the draft is that that you should skip the draft that you should automatically trade the pick like you have to go into the draft expecting to take the pick and that's a hundred percent what the magic should be doing so I think the best way to start here then is to think about and look at this draft through uh by by needs and obviously the number one need the magic have is shooting. Who are the best shooters in this draft? Can the Magic afford to bring in players who are not viable shooters? 
Um, look, you're looking at rookies. Rookies need time. Rookies are going to make mistakes. Rookies are going to they have to adjust to the three-point line in the NBA. It's hard to find those top-level shooters that come in and instantly make an impact. Again, a lot of rookies, your, your role is really small. Uh, when we talked with Richard a couple weeks ago, the guy that I think everyone had on the tip of their tongue was Tennessee gar- Tennessee wing Dalton Connect. Um, he is probably the best shooter in, in this draft. Averaging 21.1 points per game, transferring from Northern Colorado to Tennessee, shooting 39.7% from three, 76.4% from the line. He's got seven games of 30 or more points this year, including 40 points on six for 15 shooting against Kentucky at the end of the season. Tennessee is a two seed. They will play St. Peter's Thursday night. That's at 920. So right when the magic game ends, um, you, you'll be able to flip over and watch him. They, they should be around for a little bit. I, I have Tennessee going pretty deep. I have Tennessee's potential Final Four team. Um, they should be around for a little bit. So we'll get to see Dalton connect and get to see him go up against a better competition. Tennessee will face the winner of Tennessee, Colorado State, and then a potential matchup with Creighton in the Sweet 16. So um, plenty of plenty of opportunity to see him still play. Unfortunately, like because the magic has fallen so far, um, he might be out of their range. He may not be an option for the magic anymore. Uh, it's looking like he's going to go late lottery. And again, listen to our friends at locked enemy big board. They're going to do a much better job talking about these prospects than I will. Um, cause I'm still learning a lot of these guys. Um, this top pa- part of the draft is very un. It's very, you know, not uh, unstable. Like there are 10 guys, maybe seven or eight guys that might have a claim to be the number one pick. I I, I still think it's Alex Sar, but um, you know, there's 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 a lot of guys that are gonna be pushing to get into the top five, a lot more than five. And so Connect is looking like in that second tier of players. It's not one of the top guys, but is considered one of the best remaining players in this draft. With him off the board, and, and look, there's a lot of guys in this draft that are not playing in the NCAA tournament. There's Hunter Salas from Wake Forest, who I think would be an option for the Magic as well. The, the, the ringer had him going there, but I've seen him in the second round comfortably too. There's uh, the kid from Miami. Let me let me make sure I get names here because I'm, I'm still learning names, so I apologize for having to quickly grab some stuff here. Let me just find it. Let me find my... Let me find my mock draft here that I was using. It'll it'll come to me. Um, you know they, they there are still uh, there are still a lot of players that uh, 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 are not going to be playing in this in this NCAA tournament. You know Zachary Rickacer, Rick uh, uh, um, uh, Rasasher. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'll learn pronunciations here. I apologize for that. Uh, Alex Sar, um, the the kid from Miami. Uh, um, let me make sure I get his name right. Sorry about that. Uh, Kishan George, thank you. Um, very much magic type of players. They're not in the tournament. Like, they're not in the tournament. Um, and so when you look at shooters, Dalton Connect is the guy. Um, he is the shooter. He's going to be the guy that every magic fan is going to be obsessed with. Um, but I'd also keep an eye on Jacoby Walter from Baylor. Um, Jacoby Baylor is going to play Colgate Friday night, Friday afternoon at 1240. Um, Jacoby Walter. Not the shooter that Connect is, but six foot five, averaged fourteen point two points, four point four rebounds per game. Um, had a really bad shooting season, but uh, Sam Bassini of the Athletics that you know evaluated him as a pretty good shooter coming out of high school. So there are some options and some guys to keep in mind. But look, Dalton Connect is a ready-made movement shooter who can be a volume shooter at the NBA level. Uh, and, and look, the Magic are winning enough that he is going to be gone, long gone by the time the Magic picks. So. I don't think the Magic are going to be able to find shooting, like strict shooting in this draft where they're picking, certainly. Um, This is a draft that's actually pretty heavy on two other needs the Magic have. Kind of smallish, hawkish guards, like Jacoby Walter, actually, uh, and bigs. So this isn't the shooting draft, but there are other needs that the Magic should be able to fill, and I'll highlight some players to keep an eye on coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at Nissan. Are you the kind of driver who likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Well, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. 
The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. With class-exclusive Google built in, it's your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone, Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect midsize crossover for your next adventure. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the 2024 Nissan Armada. It's going to change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to eight in first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop today at NissanUSA.com. Again, that's NissanUSA.com. Today's episode of Locked on Magic also brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets. My my brackets are not busted. Um, I went two for four on my first four picks, which I'm usually pretty happy about. Um, but, you know, we can always do a little bit better. Say goodbye to busted brackets this, this, this tournament because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. We want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Well, have to turn down the volume with all the shouting. I know I, I, my voice raises, but I'm never shouting at you. I hope I'm not shouting at you. I had to listen to a first take clip today, and it, it was bad. Make the switch today to Locked On Sports Today, a free, free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news from local experts who know their team best. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So like I said, this this is not going to be the draft to find shooting. And and look, the Magic are drafting later. We're going to be drafting in the 20s, hopefully, you know, if, if not the late teens. The Magic are not going to have their pick of the litter. They're going to have to differentiate guys who can help them and fit their style and fit what they're doing. We're, we're not hunting for a star. We need guys who can play roles and, and, yes, contribute to this team. And so there's two needs that that I do really see as potentially big needs that the Magic are going to have to fill or at least think about uh, for depth purposes here. And obviously, I think the big one that we were all obsessed with uh, coming out of the trade deadline was point guard. Uh, I think we all sense that the Magic are going to invest in a guard of some type this year. The, the, line, the starting lineup with Gary Harris has been incredibly good. There's a proof of concept there with Jalen Suggs as the point guard, quote-unquote. Um, but I think we all sense that Gary Harris is one foot in, one foot out right now. Um, it's not clear what his future holds. And yeah, there are some free agents and there's obviously trade opportunities to go out and get a high-level player. So the needs here are about adding depth. And look, the Magic are pretty loaded at guard. Jalen Suggs, Anthony Black, Jet Howard, Cole Anthony. They got four young guards that doesn't count Gary Harris, that doesn't count Marco Fultz, both free agents. They're going to have to fill in and replace some of these guys too. Um, whether they do that with veterans, whether they use the pick, still a huge mystery. But this is actually a really good draft, I think, to add the kind of guards that the Magic actually kind of value. Um, if there's a player that I'm really eager to see, uh, really eager to see here uh, in the uh, NCAA tournament, it's Duke guard, uh, let me get his name, uh, Jared McClain. Um, he is, or he, or McCain, sorry, Jared McCain. I, can't, I kept writing McClain too. Um, Jared McCain is honestly the player that I am most interested in seeing in this NCAA tournament. He's had a really strong finish this season. Duke will play number 13, uh, 13 seed Vermont Friday night. That's a 7-10 game. That's a primetime game on Friday night. Um, he is, he's the guy that I'm really interested in. He's six foot three, so a little on the small side. 
but averaging 13.4 points per game, 39.9% from three, 86.8% from the line. So I think the shooting's there. In ACC play, up that to 14.4 points per game, five and a half rebounds per game, and then still shot a respectable 37.5% from three, was still high 80s for free throw shooting. This is a guy that I think can be, uh, you know, looks that looks to project as a big time shooter. Now, at six foot three, he's kind of like Cole Anthony. Does not have the same scoring reputation Cole Anthony had coming out of high school or coming out of college, um, but he's on the small side. You need to put a bigger guard with him. But here's the thing, and he's not a big assist guy. He's averaging like one, two, three assists per game, somewhere in there. Um, but here's the thing. I don't know if the Magic need a like true point guard. They like guys who are big for their size, who they want everyone to be able to make decisions. They want everybody to be able to handle the ball. And obviously they got Franz Wagner. Right now they have Joe Ingles. It's it's I'd say it's a pretty good chance he's back next year, but you know, you never know. Um, they have Franz Wagner, they have Joe Ingles, they have Paolo Bencaro, they have Cole Anthony, they have Jalen Suggs. They have a bunch of guys who can handle the ball. And, and honestly, like I think what the magic need more than necessarily a ball handler is an organizer, someone that you that can just get them into their right sets. But having said that, McCain is kind of the type of guard the Magic really like. He's kind of the type of type of guard that this team hunts for, that this team just eats up and loves to have because he's, you know, big for a that's point guard. You know, they know he's going to defend. And he can shoot the ball a little. He can shoot the ball a little bit and create a little bit. Um, that is kind of what they're looking for. He's had a really nice finish to the season. And I think it's, you know, he's going to be right in the range where the Magic are going to be picking. Um, if if there's a point guard that I think the Magic should be looking at, it's him. Um, and, and so I'm really interested to see him play uh, and really interested to see what he can do. The other guard that I'm going to say keep an eye on, although I, I, he's not really mocked in the Magic's area and the NCAA tournament is probably not going to be a great representation for him, is Tyler Kolick of Marquette. Marquette plays Western Kentucky Friday at 2 p.m., uh, so afternoon start. He's also 6'3", 15 points per game, 7.6 assists per game, so a little bit more of that playmaking. Shooting splits this year are 48.6, 40-88. So 40% from three, 88% from line. Very, very good. Four-year player. You know he's going to come and be ready to contribute. You know, you know he's he's built up to have a really nice senior year. He is expected to be back for the NCAA tournament, tournament, but he had an injury that's kept him out since the end of February. So he missed the Big East tournament. Um, no one really knows what his stat. You know, it, he's expected to play and return, but nobody knows if he's going to be that. Um, it'll be interesting to see what he can do, and obviously, just don't hold the NCAA tournament against him. I don't think this is necessarily uh, uh, that that kind of game, but. I'd keep an eye on him because, again, the Magic are looking for shooters. Like, shooting ma shooting matters. And they're looking for floor spacers. They're looking for decision makers. Um, that's what they want. They don't necessarily need another point guard. They need an organizer, a manager, and they're not going to get that in the draft. They need a veteran for that. Um, but they're looking for guys who can fit into this culture and this identity. Now, look, I'm not going to sit here and say I know what wingspans are yet. That that's going to be the de deciding factor for a lot of these players. Um, you know, because that's a thing the Magic care about. They care about positional size. Um, but skill wise, and what we're going to see in the tournament, these guys have something that I think does work for the Orlando Magic and does work uh, for this team. So I, I am again very interested to see how these players play. Um, before we get to our last need, I would be remiss if I didn't mention one more player. Um, that is worth noting, who does not necessarily fit a perfect need, but is just kind of a magic player. And that's Johnny Furphy of Kansas. Um, Furphy started the year coming off the bench from Kansas. He's originally from Australia. Um, freshman for Kansas. Start, started starting games after they lost to UCF. And Kansas had a rough year. And I don't think the tournament's going to be a great representation for him because he's not a creator. He's not a main guy with Hunter Dickinson and Kevin McCullough out. And Kevin McCullough is another name to know as well, but he's not playing in the NCAA tournament. Um, with both those guys out, Furphy's going to have a lot of responsibility on him, but he's had a really nice season. In Big 12 play, he averaged 11.4 points per game, 6.4 rebounds per game, with 40 on um, shooting splits of 49-6, 36-5, 78-5. Um, I don't know if the Magic need another big wing. And again, you could just slide in and do what Chumo KK and Caleb Houston does. 
Um, you know, you got Jet Howard hanging around. Furphy can maybe play that 3-4. Maybe that's more what the Magic are looking for in the draft. But Furphy is really, really athletic. He plays really hard. I think he defends pretty well. Um, he can finish around the basket. His three-point shots come a long way. Um, he's 35.4% for the year, 36.5% in Big 12 play. Um, there's a lot to like about Furphy, and I think that he will be available in the Magic Strings. So uh, keep an eye on him from Kansas as well. Like I said, I want to focus on needs more than anything else. And I think the other need that the Magic have kind of bubbling beneath the surface is big man. And guess what? This is a great draft for big men. This is a great draft to need a big man. We'll talk about two big men options and two other big men options, actually, that the Magic could be looking at in the draft that you should be keeping an eye on in the draft coming up here in just a moment. But first, today's episode of Locked on Magic is brought to you by our friends over at BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let it out, especially to someone who's unbiased in your life. Just verbalizing, getting something out into the world, putting, you know, whether it's negative energy, or positive energy, just getting it outside of your body, frankly, is therapeutic. That's what it is. So today I want to encourage you to get something off your chest in a constructive way. Send it out into the universe. Release it. Get rid of the negative energy. Put the positive energy out there around you, whatever, whatever, whatever it is. And it helps to have someone who can bounce those ideas back at you to send the negative energy and flip it into a positive to affirm the positive energy around you. That's what therapy does. Therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports team. Although right now no one has a problem with what the magic are doing. And it's important to get things off your chest every once in a while and release some of the stress and energy that gets pent up inside of all of us. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give better help a try. It's entirely online designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on NBA. What I want to, you know, what I hope I've been trying to do, and maybe I've been clear, maybe I haven't been on this, but what I've been trying to do today is, is preview a little bit where I think the manager can go in free agency and go in the offseason. Obviously, the draft is a part of that offseason process. Um, there are a lot of things that to like about the magic. There's a lot of things that work that work, but I, I will reiterate this, and I know I've made this point several times. Um, we don't know what the magic actually need yet. No, like I said, I think we we think they need a point guard. We know they need shooting. I will say they need shooting. Um, but we don't really know the exact kind of player that the Magic are going to be hunting for until the playoffs. At the end of the day, the playoffs are going to determine where this team goes next. How they win, how they succeed, how they fail, how they flop. Whatever happens in the playoffs is going to inform what the Magic do next. Now, there's obviously caveats to that because... The Magic went out and got Al Farouk Aminu because they didn't have enough big bodies to deal with Pascal Siakam and uh, and Kawhi Leonard in that playoff series. And I, I I will contend and I will argue that the idea of Al Farouk Aminu, even though he was not a great shooter, um, was a good one. And obviously injuries prevented us from ever finding out if that was a, a good idea. But that's where the pitfalls can be if you do something specifically because of what you see in the playoffs. But we're going to learn a lot. You know, the playoffs are going to be a truly educational experience, not just for, for us, but for the Magic as a team. Um, so I've been trying to go through and say, okay, these are the team's needs. Obviously shooting. Obviously a point guard. Quietly, too, I think the Magic need to improve their center depth. And obviously, Goga Batadze is a free agent this summer, and, and I, I suspect that the Magic will let him walk and that, that he's going to get a, an offer to start or get consistent minutes that he's just not going to get in Orlando. And I've pitched this idea to a few people, but I do kind of think if the Magic are going to keep this pick, and I'm not sold that they will, if the Magic are going to keep this pick, then what they should do is use this pick to be their third center. Um, Obviously, I think Wendell Carter is going to hang around unless he just gets absolutely smoked in the playoffs. Mo Wagner is Mo Wagner. He's a perfect bench center. 
the Magic should be trying to find a player who can contribute in spots, but can but can also be okay developing in the G League for a year, if that's what it takes. And this draft, like I said, is full of like really good, fun swing wing guards that I think the Magic would like. This draft is also full of big men, um, especially where the ma- around where the Magic are going to be picking, maybe a little bit before. And there's one guy in particular I want to note, um, and that is Deron Holmes. Deron Holmes plays for Dayton. They will play 10 seed Nevada on Thursday at 4:30 p.m. Uh, you can so you can check him out there. Uh, Holmes is a workhorse, and he's gotten better every year that he's played. And and this is his third year at Dayton, uh, third year in college. He's had a really strong season, averaging 20.4 points per game, 8.4 rebounds per game, and 2.1 blocks per game. Atlantic 10's player of the year. He's even shot 38.5% from three on two and a half attempts per game, suggesting that he can indeed get a little bit better and step away from the basket a little bit. But let's not pretend otherwise. Holmes is there to dominate the paint. And, and, you know, there I think there are some scouts and, and some scouting reports I've read said, well, Holmes is a little bit of a product of the college game, which is a little bit more paint bound. You don't need centers to, to make decisions and, and to, to be versatile. But Holmes is a versatile defender. Like I, I really like his defense. Um, and so he is projected currently as an early second round, late first round pick. So he is definitely in the running for this pick at 21. I don't think it's it, it might be a little bit of a reach depending on which scouting scouting report or which which uh a draft expert you look at. Um, but he is definitely someone to keep an eye on. I'd have him on my list, I'd watch him, you know. I'm going to be at the Magic game, so I won't be able to watch his game in full, but I would definitely have his game close by. Should be a good game between the Dayton and Nevada as well. Um, you know, his he's not overly athletic. The Magic, I think, do need someone who can play above the rim, and that might be the thing that ultimately detracts from him. But the numbers do speak for themselves. Dayton's had a fantastic year, and I, I really do like really do like him and how he defends. The other guy, the other big guy I would have my eye on is Baylor Baylor center Eves Misi. Baylor will play Colgate Friday afternoon at 12.40 p.m., so we'll get a good look at them. We saw them when they came here to, to UCF. He flies around the court. Like, this this guy, you know, him and him going up against Ibrahima Diallo was fun because they were just blocking as many shots as they could. He will fly around the court. He is super athletic. Uh, he's gotten some player comps to Clint Capella. That's both good and bad. He's just super, super raw right now. Like, I would not bring in Eves Misi and expect him to play significantly meaningful minutes his rookie year. Um, but having said that, what the Magic are missing and, and the centers who do really well early on in their careers are the guys who just fly around the basket and just block shots. As long as you could teach them when to jump and when to do all that stuff like Derek Lively in Dallas, um, having bigs who just fly around and block shots, that's super valuable. And, you know, that's what Goga Batadze gave the Magic in November. That's frankly one of the big elements the Magic are missing. Like Jonathan Isaac does it. You know, Jalen Suggs does it from the guard position. Um, but the Magic don't have big men who are just flying in, flying at the rim and, and protecting that rim, uh, literally. Like Wendell Carter is positional. He's very good at tracking back and disrupting lobs and disrupting plays around the basket. But if you pin him deep, he ain't blocking the shot. You know, the Magic need a Mitchell Robinson type. They need... Uh, you know, a Derek Lively would be would be great. Um, to have got have a guy who can just block and block shots at the rim. That's what Eves Missy does right now. He is super raw, though, at like super, super raw. Um, you know, he kind of chases blocks a little bit too much. Um, so definitely something to watch with Baylor. Um, but this guy is a rim protector who can fly around the basket early. Like I said, there are other great center options in this draft. Um, probably the one every there's probably the two everyone knows that will be available in the Magic Draft. That would be Duke's Kyle Filipowski. Um, you know they play Vermont Friday at seven. Uh, seventeen point one points per game, eight point six rebounds per game. Those numbers did drop in ACC play. He's averaging uh, one and a half blocks per game in ACC play, one point two for the season. He's got size. He's a tough player. He's got decent playmaking ability as well. A little bit more well rounded, but still a little bit stiff. I just I don't think you can have him guard on the perimeter, so I don't think he fits the Magic style. And it's the same with Purdue big man Zach Eady. Um, Zach Eady is the is going to be the pl- national player of the year for the second straight second straight season. He is a creature of the college game. He's big. He's like 7'2", 7'3". He is a big dude. He blocks shots. Um, he handles the ball in the post really well. Um, but 
Not very mobile. I don't think you'll be able to run a lot of the switching teams. I, I don't think he's a great fit for this Magic team. But again, he's a big player, a big rim protector. He will he will block shots there. Um, but again, I, I don't know if he can elevate his game to the NBA level. I'm I'm very I'm very leery of Zach Eady uh, in the NBA at this at this juncture. But you know we'll we'll see how things shake out. I don't want to leave you today um, without at least going over who I have in my final four. So I will give my bracket out here, which I will flash on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. There it is. Um, as wide open as this NCAA tournament feels and as this college season feels, um, I've seen a lot of people go chalk uh, on their bracket on their brackets. And I was like, I'm not going to go chalk. Like I like Iowa State, but they're a two seed. I like Arizona. They're a two seed. Um, it Because there's, you know, this this could be another tournament where a really low seed just gets hot and gets gets by. But I'm I'm more conservative with my brackets. You're gonna hate me. I have three one seeds and Arizona. Um, I have Connecticut, Arizona, Houston, Purdue, and I'm taking Houston over Arizona in my final. Uh, I covered UCF basketball this uh, this season, so I saw a lot of the Big Twelve teams. Houston was by far the best team that I saw all season long. I loved Iowa state. I think Iowa state's defense is fantastic. I'm a little worried about their guard play. Um, but uh, on offense, but Houston, Houston was really good. Um, they've got great guards. They got some solid bigs. They defend really hard. I, I really do like Houston. And I think this might be Houston's year to get back on top and, and to win the national championship. I, I think they, they have a decent draw. You know, Duke's going to be tough. That's a potential elite eight matchup. Um, Kentucky would Kentucky or Tennessee, uh, sorry, Kentucky or Marquette would also be really tough draws. I have Kentucky making the elite eight. I have Kentucky in my final four and potentially even winning the national championship. If you're looking for NBA guys, Kentucky has probably the two best players, two best draft prospect prospects in this draft, um, in, uh, in Reed Shepard. Uh, and let me get that other guard's name. Like I'm not paying attention to the top of the draft this year. I'm, I apologize. Donovan Klingon from Connecticut is a guy that, that I was paying attention to, but he's, not going to be available with Magic Pick. Um, you got Reed Shepard, a uh, great shooter, but a little on the small side. Uh, and then uh, where is his? Who is it? Um, not Cody Williams. I'm going through my list here. Uh, Rob Dillingham, uh, the point guard for Kentucky. So they have two really good guards. They can score a lot of points. Just of course, just super young. It's Kentucky. They 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 play really young, but they're playing some very good basketball. I would I would uh, that that Kentucky Houston Kentucky Houston game if that happens in the Elite Eight. Uh, could be a uh, uh, one that determines who wins the national championship. To be perfectly honest, um, Connecticut's very good. They're obviously defending champs. Arizona's got experience with Caleb Love, uh, who transferred from North Carolina. Um, it's gonna be a fun tournament. Like I'm, I'm really looking forward to this tournament. Should be some good basketball. My Wildcats, right here. Uh, my Wildcats are taking on Florida Atlantic. I am cautiously optimistic. We don't lose in the round of 64, but um, it, we're hurt. We're hurt. I'm not gonna lie. We're hurt. Um, but should be a very pro Northwestern crowd up at the Barclays Center. Um, I'm very excited, of course, for the NCAA tournament. And I'm excited to watch uh, some afternoon basketball um, for, with everyone. So should be a fun tournament. Should be a fun draft process. We'll obviously dive a lot more into that after the season. We'll get back to the Magic season on tomorrow's episode of Lockdown Magic as we recap their game against the New Orleans Pelicans. But thank you for sitting with me as I do some draft prep. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Lockdown Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Himmel, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all of them makes it on podcasts to your podcast and able to device. For latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can find us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. And of course, be sure to check out my Patreon page, the Orlando Magic Hub, for even more Magic content. You can find that at patreon.com slash Hub. And as always, thank you for the support. Don't forget that Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and now available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Day is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to the to, to this episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Phil Prosperin-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.